Hi, evening everyone, and welcome to my next how-to video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be looking at castration, uh, purely because I'm doing a couple next week, and both clients have asked for some advice in advance, so I thought I'd put it into a little video. Um, as if you've seen my other videos, you'll know I do sometimes use a, an equine assistant in the form of one of my horses. Funnily enough, I didn't have any volunteers for this one. To be fair, the only one who would have been any use was Alf, and he said he had no interest in helping out with a castration video. So you've just got me, I'm afraid. So I'm just going to look at how to prepare your colt for his castration. I'm not going to talk too much about the procedure so that people um, aren't put off. Um, and, and then I'm going to talk about how to look after your colt after the procedure. So these days, most field castrations are done standing. So your colt will simply be uh, sedated and local anaesthetic will be applied. So you'll be there probably holding on to him, um, helping. In my case, I get my clients to help with the timing for when I put the clamps on. Um, so how should you prepare your colt for the castration? If you've had your colt for a while and you know when you're planning on castrating him, then it's a really good idea to get him used to having his back legs handled. And also, if it's not, if it's safe to, to start touching around his belly, around his sheath area, purely so that when your vet comes to do the castration, it's not the first time your colt's been touched around that area. If you can't, if it's if it's unsafe, um, if he tries to kick you, then then don't worry, we'll sedate and, and we'll be very careful and we'll be used to difficult colts anyway. But if you can, really good idea to get them used to just at least even having their hind legs picked up. And hopefully if you've had them for a while, they will have seen the farrier anyway and be used to that. So what do we need you to do before we arrive? Actually, not a huge amount. Um, ideally, you want to have your colt quite clean. It doesn't need to be spotless. He doesn't need to be bathed, but ideally not plastered in mud. Um, so a good brush, no mud up on his belly, no mud around his hind legs would be ideal. Again, if, just do your best. If you can't, we'll make do. Um, and what do you need to prepare for us? So I always say to my clients that um, we'll, sort of, we'll work out on the day often where we're going to do it, where's the quietest place, where's the safest place, where's the cleanest place. If you've got a stable, a nice big airy stable, then perfect. It doesn't have to be brilliantly light. I'll often put a head torch on to do the procedure, um, but it does need to be as clean as possible. Often straw on a concrete floor, clean straw on a concrete Concrete floor isn't ideal, can become a bit slippery, especially when they're sedated and try to brace themselves with their hind legs. Um, but I've done them on that, we've coped on that. Ideally, rubber mats with a straw bed is perfect, or somewhere outside. If it's really, really sunny, then I often like to do them under a tree in the shade somewhere. But most most equine vets will adapt to what you've got as long as we can can get on and do that, do it in a reasonably clean place. Um, equipment wise, we bring everything ourselves, but I always ask my clients to bring, I'm sure some vets will be different and they'll tell you in advance anyway. I always ask for two very clean buckets, preferably new buckets, don't need to be top of the range, just your cheap plastic one or two pound water buckets. I always ask for two of those because I have one for cleaning the surgical prep. So I put hippie scrub and cotton wool in that. And I have the other one for my equipment during the procedure. So that has hippie scrub, but no cotton wool. Um, the reason I'm having two is A, cleanliness, and B, if you've left a bit of cotton wool in the cleaning bucket, it often gets stuck in the equipment in the other one. So two buckets, and I like to have warm water doesn't need to be sterile, doesn't necessarily need to be boiled. We put piles of, of hippy scrub into that, uh, but warm is great just from the point of view of it's not as, as much of a shock for the coat when you go to wash the area. And then I always ask my clients as well for a couple of towels. My equipment comes, it's, it's sterilised, so it comes in plastic bags, but I often like to open the bags up onto some towels. They don't need to be clean towels. And please don't bring your, your top of the range Egyptian cotton bath towels that you want to use again, because there might be a little bit of blood on them afterwards. So just a, a clean so old yard towel, um, but I say preferably a couple of them and, and ones that have gone through the wash. And that's about it really. That's all you need to prepare for us before we, we come out to do the procedure. So during the procedure, again, I, I, I promise not to talk too much about that um, for the squeamish amongst you, 
but we'll, we'll be doing it standing, we'll be putting local anaesthetic in, your colt will be sedated. And um, again, vets vary. I often like to have someone um, standing there, often the owner, um, to time how long I leave the clamps on for. It also gives the owner something to do if they're worried about the procedure. Um, I'll often waffle on during the procedure about what to look out for. Clients are normally quite nervous, don't really hear a word I'm saying, but it, it makes the time go quicker. And then I always go, everything, go through everything again afterwards. Procedure after we've washed, scrubbed the sites, done all the injections is really quite quick and, and probably takes 15 to 20 minutes. We can't stitch and that always surprises a lot of people. We do leave the incisions open and we can't stitch because we're in a field situation. It's not particularly sterile. Um, if you think of a cat that goes into a small animal practice to have to be castrated, done completely sterilely in theatre, um, we're out in a in a dirty environment so if we stitched up that area then you'd be almost guaranteed infection the suture material that we'd use um, would do what we call it acts as a nidus for infection so the bacteria can stick to that and you're pretty much guaranteed an infection or certainly in my experience i've never tried it but but from what i've heard so we rely on clamping the vessels to stop the bleeding and then we leave two open incisions and um, so one of the main things to look out for, and this is how to care for your colt after castration, would be bleeding. Um, if you, I always say to my clients, if you can count the drips, that's fine. Um, I often faff around for quite a while afterwards at the castration, um, at the yard, so that by the time I've left, most of them aren't really bleeding at all. And I know if they're likely to carry on dripping. Um, but no question is a silly question um, as far as a castration goes. It's a pretty major procedure that, you know, we do them routinely. I'll do but anywhere between 50 and, and 80 a year. Um, so it, we do them a lot, but it is it is quite a big procedure. So keeping an eye on your colt and being able to stay up there, or now called a gelding, <laughs> and being able to stay up your yard for a good few hours afterwards and then do a late check a few hours after that is a really good idea. So I get people to call me with drip rates if they're worried, send photos, anything like that. But if you're worried after the procedure, you absolutely must contact your vet. The, the worst that'll happen is they'll say, that's, you know, the best that'll happen, sorry, is they'll say that's absolutely fine, nothing to worry about. The worst that'll happen, they'll need to come back out and either reclamp or or pack the, the area. But just contact your vet. And that's the main bit of advice I've got for anyone looking after their colt after a castration is if you're worried, even if you think it's a really stupid question, just take a photo, take a video and give your vet a call and they'll be more than happy to, to hopefully reassure you. Um, so afterwards, the main thing to look out for will be bleeding. And that's why it's really important to be able to hang around for a couple of hours afterwards and just make sure that no bleeding increases and that actually it's slowing down and, and nearly stopping. After that, there's not much care again. We all have, as vets, all have different preferences. I prefer the colts to stay in and stay still for the rest of that first day and that night. Um, if they're doing really well that evening and I've done the castration in the morning, then happy for them to go out for a little pick of grass that evening, but I don't like them turned out until the next day. From the next day, I do like them out and moving and moving quite a lot. So your things to, to worry about after that first day would be infection and swelling or probably swelling and then infection. So I always have my castrations on both bute and antibiotics. Some vets don't go on and put them on antibiotics. That's fine. Um, I do just belt and braces. That Are they necessary? <sighs> possibly not but bute really is and that's for both pain and keeping the inflammation down and another way to keep the swelling down is movement and so if there's no bleeding everyone's happy the colt's happy then I get them on a lot of turnout from day two and if they don't move around a lot in the field then I get you to give them a good walk out a brisk walk in hand and by day two three four a little lunge or a little in hand trot so it's really important to keep them moving no cleaning is required of the area. Really bad idea actually to clean the, the surgical site itself because if there's any muck on the outside of that area, by cleaning it, hosing it, you're pushing it back up into those open incisions. By all means, clean the inside of the legs. Um, if anything's dripped down, absolutely fine to do that. And, and actually quite important as well to keep the rest of the, of the gelding clean, but the actual site itself doesn't need touching. So really very little care afterwards other than keeping a very, very close eye on what's going on. And I think that's everything.
but yeah not not huge amount to worry about but just keeping an eye and being able to check your cult regularly certainly in the few days after the procedure hope that's helpful